Hi guys, I'm Evan from Race Tech Electric, and I'm going to show you how to install a voltage regulator uh, on a 1985 Yamaha FJ1100. Now, the regulator used on this bike uh, it fits a lot of different bikes. Uh, Yamaha, Suzuki, Kawasaki, a lot of sport and street bikes from the 80s. Um, all of them that use a Nippon Denso uh, alternator, and the FJ1100 uses one. So what we're doing is replacing the original uh, mechanical regulator with a new integrated circuit um, regulator. And these are much more reliable, they're more efficient, uh, they do have a slightly higher charging point, and they're really nice, both upgrade, preventative maintenance, uh, and a good replacement item on your bike because the original will fail eventually. So anyways, I'm going to show you how to do it. It's really simple, uh, easy install. You just need a couple tools, uh, mainly an 8 millimeter wrench and a socket wrench, uh, and you'll need a soldering iron as well and a Phillips head screwdriver. That's about it. So first things first, uh, we're working on uh, my personal bike here. This is a 1985 Yamaha FJ1100. So we're going to get started by removing the cover of the alternator. Alternator's right here, right on the side of the bike, easy access. You don't have to remove anything else. And this is all we're working with here. We're going to go ahead and remove the cover. Really simple. We have uh, three 8 millimeter bolts. One right here, one uh, right here. Kind of hard to see, but on the side right there. And we got one more right back here uh, behind the clutch uh, hose. So on the FJ, it's really simple. You can just loosen the bolt here, uh, which is a 12 millimeter bolt and slide this out of the way just slightly and then we can get access to the bolt. I'm going to go ahead and remove those and then uh, we'll move on okay, to the next step. Okay, I have all three of those um, nuts loose, uh, again 8 millimeters. Uh, I'm just going to pop the cover off and undo that and just slide it straight out of the way. Set that down. Now we're looking at uh, the face of the alternator and really simple, all we need to remove, uh, just using Phillips head screws, Phillips head screwdriver, need to remove the mounting bolt here that holds the regulator in place and we need to remove uh, the mounting wires which we've got this guy right here and there's one more right behind it, it's kind of hard to see but right back here all Phillips heads, go ahead and remove those and then we'll pop the alternator base out of the way uh, sorry one more screw right here as well now once those four screws are removed uh, all you do is slide the regulator housing out of the way just drop straight down and out and that's about it. Now we're going to go ahead and show you where it came from. There's all the mounting holes. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and remove uh, the old regulator okay, I have from the, the regulator box. housing in my vise now. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and remove the two Phillips head screws which hold the regulator in place right here and right here. And then we're going to use a soldering iron and you'll see two solder points. One right here and one right here. We're going to melt both of those, heat them up with a soldering iron, and we'll use a flathead screwdriver and gently pry the regulator out of its housing. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the screws right now and heat up both of these points with my soldering iron and remove the regulator. Okay, so I'm just going to show you real quick the method for getting this out. Um, take your soldering iron and you just want to alternate back and forth between the two pins. You want to heat them up, hold the soldering iron on until the solder melts, gently pry with the screwdriver and you'll see that end popped loose. I've already done part of this so I'm just doing the final step here. Now on the other one, heat up the other pin till the solder melts and pop it out. That's it. The regulator will pop right out and now we have the housing ready to go back in the bike. It's going to mount on the old regulator housing just like that. So you can see the regulator, the spacer, and the bolt. Now we're going to go ahead and remount it in the same location and you just slide it in place just like that and then we're going to put the regulator mounting bolt through the original hole right there above it. I don't have it lined up yet. So I'm going to go ahead and get this in place and I'll take a shot showing so the final. Now mount. that we have our mounting bolt with the spacer installed loosely on the left side here, we're going to go ahead and take one of the original mounting bolts, the larger ones, and put that back in place right here. Now that's what's actually going to mount this firmly, mount the regulator housing back in place. So now that we have those two installed loosely to hold this in place, we can go ahead and attach our wires. Now very simple, the red wire will go back to this location right here where the original red wire was. So you want to take the original red wire, slide it back into place just like that. Then we're going to take our new red wire put the ring over it, 
and then we're going to put the original mounting bolt back in place. Then, once that's done, we're going to install the black wire, and the black wire goes right back to here, where there was originally just a single mounting bolt, this spot right here. So we'll route our black wire to that location, right back over there, and then put the mounting bolt through it, and that will ground it. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and do that, and I will show okay, you in just I have a everything mounted and our bolts snugged up. All I have left to do is reroute the wires, but just to go over it again and show you where everything mounts to, we have our mounting bolt here. This is the longer one that's included with your new regulator with a spacer behind it, right there. And that gets snugged up, and that's the front mount, as well as grounds the new IC uh, for your regulator. Okay, and then we have right behind this right here, oops, there we go. There is one of the original, original mounting bolts, which uh, tightens up the uh, regulator um, bracket assembly. So that's tightened up right there. Okay. Oh, sorry, right back there, the big one. Okay, then we have our red wire, which is grouped on top of the original red wire coming from the harness, that our both uh, ring terminals have the original small bolt going through them, right there. That's the uh, hot connection. Okay, and then we have our grounding wire, which is the black wire from the new regulator, which gets looped around and tightened up to this other small bolt right back here. Kind of hard to see, but this is the black wire right there with that ring terminal on it. Okay, so those are all your connections. Make sure you snug them up and make sure you have your new regulator tightened up right here along the edge so it will clear that uh, as you put the cover back on. Then we're going to make sure you route your wires nicely right up against the side here and your grommet's still in place. And that's it, that's how you install your new regulator. Uh, pretty easy to do, you can do it in about uh, 20 minutes on this bike, very simple. So those are our connections. I'm gonna go ahead and put the cover back on, uh, put the three eight millimeter nuts back on to secure the cover, and then we'll fire up the bike and measure the battery and make sure we're still charging. Just okay, fine. now we're all done, got the cover put back on, got our clutch hose tightened up, moved back into place. So let's do a quick check and make sure we're charging the battery strong. Now, a real simple way to do it, we're going to take a multimeter, go ahead and take your seat off so you can easily get to the battery. Then we're going to hook up our multimeter, measure battery voltage, set to DC volts, 12 volt setting. So good battery, 12.9 volts. So we're going to go ahead and key on and run. Now we're going to go ahead and rev up the bike at 4,000 RPM or so and make sure we're charging. So that looks great. What we wanted to see is that the battery voltage increased uh, with RPM and then was regulated uh, to about uh, max about 14.4 volts, which is what we just saw. So that means our regulator is working just fine, charging our battery strong, and it is regulating uh, and preventing the battery from overcharging. So anyways, that's how you do it. That is uh, a voltage regulator install on a Nip and Denso alternator and on this bike, an 85FJ1100. And again, I'm Evan from Racetech Electric. Uh, our part number for these regulators is R025. Uh, they retail for uh, $55 to $60. We just got them in. I don't think we've set an exact retail price, but you're looking at $55 to $60. Uh, and they're available on our website, www.racetechelectric.com, uh, part number R025. Thanks a lot.